Have you ever received a PDF and wondered, is this safe to open? With cyber threats on the rise, it's crucial to know how to identify malicious PDFs before they wreak havoc on your system. And if you want to become a top cybersecurity professional, then you really need to be able to analyze PDFs. In this video, I'm going to give you the essential steps as a beginner to spot malicious PDFs just like a pro. Whether you're a beginner or just looking to brush up on your skills, this guide will arm you with the knowledge to be able to protect yourself and your data. We'll cover the telltale signs of a malicious PDF show you the best tools for the job and give you actionable steps to be able to start right away. Don't let cyber criminals catch you off guard. By the end of this video, you'll have the confidence to handle any suspicious PDF that comes your way. Hey, my name's AJ and I've been in cybersecurity for the last eight years. And on this channel, we teach all things cybersecurity for beginners. So now let's jump straight in to analyzing malicious PDFs. So first up then, we're going to explore the basic signs of a malicious PDF. So a lot of malicious PDFs and malicious files do come via phishing emails. I don't have an example of a phishing email that has delivered a PDF, but what we can use instead is something called Malware Bazaar. And on Malware Bazaar, what you can do is you can get example malware files that you can perform analysis on, and that includes PDFs files. So I come in here, uh, you can pick any one of these that you want. I picked this one in particular here. And as you can see here, then uh, this is just going to give us an overview of the file itself. So if this file was to get delivered via a phishing email, a few things that I would be looking out for. So the file name then, I'd um, be likely this has probably come from some kind of uh, finance order or some kind of invoice request. And that's usually what attackers will use. They'll make this look like a legitimate invoice. And so I'd always be watching out for the file name to make sure that it's something I'm aware of. Because if it's, even if it's coming for a sender that you know of, you still want to be wary of the file name. It's attackers these days are getting a lot more sophisticated. And for that reason, file name is one place that you can start. Also file size. So a large file size for a PDF is usually suspicious. It could mean that there's something hidden in there. And as we can see further down here then, that it shows that this information, uh, this file did come from a mail spam campaign. So we've got a sample here and it's saying delivery method distributed by email attachment. So this is a very common way for attackers to be sending, um, actually delivering these malicious files. And of course, there's some intelligence here, say in the country of origin or is Germany. Again, all of these indicators are things that we want to be looking out for uh, when we're actually trying to do analysis on the file itself. So now you as a cybersecurity professional, like you've been alerted to this file by an antivirus solution or maybe one of the employees has created a ticket with you and they want you to investigate this. So now these are some indicators that you would look at, but we need to deep dive further to fully understand what is going on here. Now it's time to dig deeper into the PDF itself. So what we can do first is download the sample. Then once you've downloaded the sample, so I'm actually using a Kali Linux virtual machine here. Please do use a virtual machine for this uh, just to make sure because these are live malware samples. If you accidentally open it, you don't want to open it on your live machine where you're doing most of your work. Make sure you're using a virtual machine. If you want a video on how to set up a Kali Linux virtual machine, comment down below and let me know. But next, once that file is downloaded, you can extract this file here. So you can do extract. And then now we can see the file is in our downloads folder here. And a tool that we're going to use to analyze this PDF is called PDF ID. And you're going to need Python. So you want to check Python that you've got Python installed. So you can do Python 3 dash dash version. As you can see here, I've got that installed. If you don't have that installed, then you can use this command here, sudo app get install Python 3 just to install that for you. So then once you've got Python 3 installed, what we want to do then is make sure that we our machine is up to date. So we can run sudo app update. Uh, type in your password. As you can see here, mine is already up to date. Then what we want to do then is install the actual tool, which is PDF ID. So we do sudo pip3 install PDF ID. Hit enter. As you can see, I've already installed it and it's been installed to this directory path here. So then we just want to switch into this directory path, do ls just to see if it's in there. As we can see, it's there. Then we'll then switch into the PDF ID directory. And as you can see here, then PDF ID PY is right there. I've already set mine as executable, but you just want to do sudo chmod plus x uh, PDF id.py and then this will just make sure it's ex executable so that we can run that python script and now we're actually ready to run that python script on our pdf file so we do python 3 pdf id.py and then the directory path of wherever you've stored that pdf file that we downloaded from malware bazaar 
hit enter and now PDF ID has given us a summary of the elements that are in this particular file. So first of all, we can see there is presence of JavaScript. So it is unusual for there to be JavaScript within a PDF file. It's not to say that it can't be used for legitimate purposes, but usually JavaScript in a PDF file is extremely strange. So that's something to look out for uh, because attackers often use JavaScript to exploit vulnerabilities uh, in PDF readers, which could then potentially lead to harmful code being executed on the computer. So this should be the first indicator that we're thinking of, hmm, this is a bit strange. Then we've got one of open action. So the PDF actually has an action to trigger as soon as the file is open. So when the file is open, something will automatically trigger. That again is something suspicious and it's commonly used to run harmful scripts without the user knowing. So there's another element here then of an embedded file. So PDFs can include other files, things such as documents, images, uh, also even executable programs, which is what attackers are using to be able to run malicious code on your computer. So again, this is something that is standing out for me here. So everything that we're seeing so far with PDF ID is really making us stand out that we're thinking that this is malicious. So in addition to PDF ID, we can also use a tool called PDF Parser to further look at the code that's within the PDF file itself. So first you're going to want to run this wget command to actually download PDF Parser. And you're going to want to run this command to actually unzip that file. So unzip PDF Parser. And then as we did with PDF ID, you're also going to want to make this executable. So chmod plus x dash pdf dash parser dot py. So this is allow us to use that script and execute it. Then we can run this command pdf dash parser dot py and then the location of the file. Hit enter. And then if we make this bigger, there we can see the code here uh, that is embedded within that file itself. And it's going to be allow us to further understand what this file is trying to do. So what we can do then, so it's often difficult to be able to always analyze different files um, and quickly as well. So one good thing we can do these days is use the presence of AI. So we can copy this code into ChatGPT. And as you can see, I've copied that code in here. And it's gonna give some key findings to help us quickly identify and analyze this file. So one of the things that I noticed was the embedded file. So it's saying that there's an embedded file uh, named this with .uue and it's saying that Embedded files can deliver additional malicious payloads, so it's got to be extremely cautious about that. JavaScript action, so it's looking, the JavaScript is attempting to actually execute this embedded file within. And like we mentioned with PDF ID, it's using open action. So open action means that it's going to automatically open that as soon as a user opens this file. It is extremely suspicious. So ChatGPT and our analysis is leading to this PDF file being likely very malicious. But what we're going to continue doing now is further analyze the file using some more automated tools to help us determine what we should do next. Next up, we're going to use an automated sandbox that is going to let us interact with this file to see if we can gather more information. So a tool that I really like is called app.any.run. So I can come in here, analyze my file, pick the file itself, open it up. Then I can leave all these settings, I can run public analysis. So public analysis means that anybody with a link will be able to view my analysis here. So often that's not something you want to do for an internal company because uh, you could accidentally upload sensitive documents here. So be very careful with the documents that you're uploading because they will become public. So you can agree to that and we're going to upload the file and then it's going to run its analysis on the file itself. And as we can see here then, um, this is a great tool because it's going to let us actually interact with the file itself so you can see here it opens the file so remember this .uue file is the file that we actually saw um, during our analysis with pdf id so as we open it, this up then it looks like it's trying to get us to open an executable windows executable file so we run this and after any dot run is going to allow us to see look we can see then this is dropping a svc host.exe which is a legitimate um windows executable but then it looks to have jo dropped this we are fault.exe which looks very suspicious so what i would be doing then as a cybersecurity analyst and what i would do i'd be going through here checking out these executables and wondering why they've actually been dropped so when i actually looked for where fault.exe it looks like it is a legitimate windows executable but it does look like it's being used for suspicious purposes as we can see here but actually further analysis shows that this then is indicating is executed for windows error reporting so some kind of error has taken place here so the executable itself is not being used for 
malicious purposes, but it's generated an error which has been dropped from the malicious executable itself. The idea here then would be to come through, start to understand what's taking place here. So a great thing with app.any.run is going to show us all of the HTTP requests that were made from that machine. So we can start to come through here to start to understand if these are authorized or understand what this malware is actually doing. We want to come through here and pinpoint malicious connections. Uh, we can review all the connections from each process as well. So this is going to help us really understand if that file, it dropped an executable, what did it then do next? It likely wanted to connect outbound. Has it done that here? So this looks to be, um, because it's an old malware file, it may not be connecting back to its attacker's infrastructure, but this will be a great place for us to be able to see that. And we can see all the DNS requests here as well. And one final great thing about this tool is that you can click on IOCs and it'll pull out all of the indicators from here. So the idea here then as a cybersecurity analyst, you will be pulling out these indicators of compromise, determining which ones are malicious and, and then running those across your infrastructure. So for example, this then we saw the PDF drop this malicious Windows executable. So this is the same as the file name of the PDF. So extremely suspicious. What we'd be doing now then is looking across the entire of our infrastructure, likely using the endpoint detection system and check in to see if this executor has been dropped anywhere else in our infrastructure. The same with these IP connections as well. We want to be determining which ones legitimate processes connecting outbound, uh, which can always happen when um, a Windows machine is running. Um, but we'd want to determine which ones are the malicious ones and then run those IP addresses across our login infrastructure, uh, across our network to determine if there is any other systems that could be compromised as well. And now we've been able to use PDF ID and other tools to actually interact with the PDF using static analysis. We've done more automated analysis and we've actually still interacted with the file so it's given us even more information. Final method I'm going to share with you then is our trusty friend VirusTotal uh, which is going to let us upload the file and it'll do some further analysis for us in a completely automated fashion this time. We can't actually interact with it, um, but it's a great tool uh, to be able to go to to try and get more information on the file itself. So it's as simple as uploading that, searching it, and instantly it's picked it up because, of, of course, this is an old malware file and it knows about it, it's seen it before, but it's showing here 37 out of 63 detections on virus total. As you can see here, it's saying that it is a Trojan um, and it's saying that it definitely is malicious. So. People have already uploaded this previously. Um, so we can go in, check the details out. Uh, we can see all the MD5 SHA-256 hash. So again, this is something that we could pull this information into our endpoint detection system and start to search across all of the endpoints within our company to see if we can find any evidence of this file being anywhere else, just as we did with the previous IOCs from app.any.run. So coming into the relations tab then, this is a, will show you further indicators of compromise. So it's gonna provide us with uh, further information. So there we can see the exe uh, that we saw for any.run. Um, and we can come in here then and get an understanding of uh, what this file might actually be doing. Now, if we go to the behavior tab, it's gonna give you an understanding of the behavior of the file itself. Uh, we can scroll down here, we can see that it's triggered a lot of detection rules, a lot of MITRE signatures, a lot of IDS rules is showing that, like we saw at the start, there was JavaScript embedded within it. Um, it was dropping an EXE, starting to make some HTTP and DNS connections, which are extremely common for malware files. But we can come in here and just get a better understanding of uh, the file itself. So the PDF executes JavaScript automatically uh, on target document and event open. So these are the things that we saw uh, when we did our static analysis. So uh, with the open event action and the JS uh, that was within the file from PDF ID. So we can come in here and it'll give us a good idea of what this file is actually trying to do. And again, all of these are the indicators that we want to be looking for and taking back to our companies and saying, okay, I found this indicators of compromise. Let's have a look across our infrastructure if there's any evidence of this taking place. And what you're actually doing there is the starting and the basics of threat hunting. So you want to come in here, get familiar with all of the information that uh, Virus Total can provide to you, uh, because there is a lot of great information in here. Um, but from what we found so far, using PDF ID, automated sandbox and Virus Total, we can confirm that this file is definitely malicious. So to conclude then, you were able to pinpoint basic signs of a malicious PDF. You're able to do static analysis on 
a PDF file using PDF Parser and PDF ID, which is a great skill to have because it proves that you don't need to rely on automated sandboxes to do your analysis. You also do know how to use automated sandboxes like app.any.run if you do need to, and you've been able to leverage online scanners like VirusTotal to further your analysis and to come to some conclusion that the PDF file is malicious. And by following these steps, you're going to be well equipped to avoid these malicious PDFs. Vigilance is always your best defense when it comes to cybersecurity, so you can protect the companies that you work for and protect your friends and family online. Now that we know that most malicious PDFs get sent via phishing emails, go and watch this video next where I teach you how to spot any fake email. Thank you for watching. I'll see you over there.